Hey everyone, Kevin here. In my last video I did an unboxing of the Samsung Q2U microphone. This is sold in America as the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB. Sells for uh, about $60 at the moment on Amazon.com. In the UK, it's sold as a Samsung Q2U and it's selling for about £44 on Amazon.com. Now, as you can see, I'm holding it with my hand and the reason I don't have it as a stand is I want to just give you an idea of how the, the microphone sounds and how it works. And You know, my, my audio um, volume might go up and down a little bit. I'm going to try and monitor it a little bit with my, you know, that's why I've got my headphones on, but I think this will give you a better example of what it can do if, you know, I just hold it like this and I can just talk. Now, you may recall from the unboxing the features, but just to give you a quick recap of what this can do. At the bottom of the, the microphone here, you can see that I'm connected with my XLR input. The XLR is a standard microphone connection and I've got it going into my Zoom H6 audio recorder. So I'm recording the audio through my Zoom H6 and it's connecting into this microphone, the Samsung Q2U. The other good thing about this mic microphone is though, this microphone also has a USB connection. So that means as I can connect it directly to my computer, any computer for that matter, and you know I can record directly through Skype or you know through Audacity, through any, any software I want, and I can use this as a microphone. It really is one of the most versatile microphones around. The fact that it has XLR and USB inputs means that I wouldn't have to buy another microphone. You know, if if I had to buy a similar microphone that only had XLR connection ports at the bottom, then I would I'd be able to use it with my Zoom H6 with my audio recorder, but I wouldn't be able to use it with my computer without having to buy some sort of adapter. And the price of the microphone is just fantastic. Now, as you can hear, you know, my volume is going, uh, or my voice is going a little bit up and down. And the reason for that is this is a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones have what's called a, a cardioid pa pickup pattern. And I mean, it basically means that it's, it's, it's it sounds great in one direction. And that is what, I, I guess it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It really depends on what you want to do. For me, it's a good thing because for what I use it for, this is ideal. Now, to explain how that works is, you know, I'm talking just now. You can see I'm just sitting, I don't know if you can see here, I'm sitting just a, a couple of centimeters away from the microphone. But if I had to just come here, and I'm just talking at the side of the microphone now, and I can see my, I can see my audio recorder. When I move just from the front of the microphone just to the side here, I'm only moving a couple of centimeters. You know, the, the, the audio recorder shows that I went from about minus six decibels all the way down to about minus 30, minus 40. So I'm dropping 20, 30 decibels just by moving my mouth to here. And that, I guess, for some people that will be a bad thing, but it's what it's designed for. This is this is used by um, musicians. You know, um, if you're a singer in a band, you would use a dynamic microphone. And one of the reasons for that is, if you're singing, you could turn around and then you could say something to the band. You know, you could change this, change that, and then you can return to singing. And the audience won't hear, you know, your instructions to the drummer or the bass player or whatever. And also, if I'm doing a podcast, I could be talking and then I need to cough and I could just... <coughs> and I'm not going to be coughing, you know, loud in, into the microphone. Against that, though, sometimes, you know, if you're too close, you know, if I could... You can you can tell it's, you know, there's a lot of heavy breathing. Um, One way to kind of reduce that kind of effect is you have this here. This is a pot filter. So when I'm using this microphone... I'm normally using it for voiceovers and things like that. When I, when I first got it, I used it for unboxing videos. I used it for everything. But now what I do is I use it for voiceovers. I use it for podcasts. I use it for live streaming events. But there, there has been a few times that I've used it for Skype as well. So it is really such a versatile microphone. But ideally, what you want to be doing is speaking with this using a, a pop filter to reduce your popping and hissing. So I would have this microphone in my stand and then I'd have my pot filter and reduce the popping and hissing. But if I look down here, I'll go off camera for a second because any normal person would have been prepared for this, but I'm not. Um, now, if you look back at my earlier videos, go back a month or two when I was in South America, I was using this microphone for a couple of videos and I was using it in the stand. Because I didn't have this pot filter, all I did is I went out and bought the windshield. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on I'll turn it off just for a second so that you can't hear all the noise. So you, you don't hear all the ruffling noise, but two seconds. It's 
So th there we go. We've got the, the windscreen on now. And effectively, this does the same thing as a pop filter. It, it, it tries to reduce the hissing and popping sounds that you get when you're too close to the microphone. So you should get a better sound when this, when this is on. The thing is, when you hold it with my hand, one of the things that's probably been annoying you, because I know it's, it's annoying me, is when you're speaking with this microphone using your hand, you know, the gain level, your volume um, of your voice is going to go up and down because if you hold it here, you know, you can hear it. And then when I just bring it a little bit closer, the volume goes way up. So I'm purposely not going to modify the audio in any way when I publish this video. So what you're listening to is the, the raw recording from the, this microphone going through my Zoom H6. I'm not going to normalize peaks. I'm not going to adjust the gain level. I'm not going to change anything. This what you're listening just now is what you get. So this is what you get when you connect this microphone using the XLR input and put it into an audio recorder. So this is it raw. You know, I've not modified it in any way. So I hope this has given you a better idea of what it sounds like without the windscreen, without a, a pot filter and with one on. Now, when I'm using it, normally I've nearly always got it in this stand and it just makes it easier because I can keep it all at the same distance and then, you know, when I get close to the pot filter, I, I can go at the same distance. So I find that much easier. I, I mean, I, I, this is the first time I've really spoke to the camera using the microphone while holding it in the hand. And I'm fi finding it difficult to try and talk and keep my vo volume at the same levels all the time. So this is really where a stand would come in. So I'll put it on the stand just quickly to show you what I mean. So this is the stand that comes with the, the microphone. I'm not sure if this comes with um, with the Audio-Technica version in America, but in the UK, you get the stand, you get XLR cam uh, cable, you get the USB cable, and you get a set of headphones as well. It's crazy for the amount of money, you know, the amount of things that they throw in for free, because a lot of other microphones, you have to, you know, you have to go out and buy these accessories yourself. Now, when you've got it sitting on a on a on a desk, you can you can keep the distance a bit easier. You know, I can just make sure I always go at this same distance. But when you pick it up, it is I'm I'm finding it difficult myself anyway. I'm not sure if other people would as well, but when you pick up the microphone it feels a little bit more difficult to try and keep the volume at the same time. So I apologize for that again. Um I apologize for the volume of my voice going up and down. So yeah, that that's it. That I hope those of you who are looking for a microphone, um, looking for at this microphone specifically, will find this useful. But for those of you who aren't looking for a microphone, I can just say this: if you're looking for your first microphone for voiceovers, for podcasting, for for doing Skype calls, for doing video streaming on Google Hangouts or UStream or whatever, this is one of the best options there. I would recommend this as the first microphone for anyone out there. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of products where I would say, well, you could have this one or you could have that one, but I really do feel strongly that this is one of the best microphones on the market at this price range. So for the price, this is a fantastic first microphone. I think I would classify it as a, a mid-range microphone at a budget price. $60 in the US and it's £44 in the UK is an absolute bargain. And the quality sounds as good as microphones that are twice or perhaps even three times more expensive. The connection thing though the fact that this has xlr and usb connections really i mean it's really what sets this microphone apart from a lot of other options that are out there if this only had the usb i couldn't connect it to my audio recorder if it only had the xlr i couldn't use it for skype on my computer it has everything and i don't have to go out and buy another microphone for that now i'm not an audiophile but to me this sounds great i think that the audio quality from this sounds really good but in the future if ever decide to get a different microphone you know perhaps i wanted something better for podcasting you know there's you can spend as much as you want when it comes to microphones you can buy one that's ten dollars you can buy one that's a thousand dollars or even higher but if you do upgrade and you get another microphone later then this would be a fantastic backup so i wouldn't recommend selling it i would just keep it around if the other one fails or if you're interviewing someone you've always got that second microphone there so I really do. I really do think this is one of the best microphones out there and I would highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a microphone for voiceovers, for podcasts, for video streaming or even just for doing your YouTube videos. If you want to sit at a distance though, you really would be better with a condenser, uh, 
condenser mic, you know, something that's going to pick pick you up and you don't have to go close. Bear that in mind. This is a dynamic microphone, so you need to get close to the microphone for you know for your voice to travel into the microphone for to be, for it to be received. And if a condenser microphone could be sitting over here, um, and it would record. The thing is, there's different types of microphones for different situations. In the unboxing video, I recorded using this shotgun mic, which are attached to my audio recorder. But for voiceovers, for, you know, if I was doing a screencast and I was trying to show someone how to do something on WordPress, I would use this. If I was doing a voiceover or over images, I would use this. If I was doing Skype calls, I would use this. If I was doing Google Hangouts, which I have done recently on my channel, I did too. Google Hangouts, one with Brian Jackson from Rice Forums. I use this and it really is fantastic. I know I'm, I'm dragging on a little bit, you know, um, but if, I hope you've enjoyed this video. But again, if you're looking for a microphone, do consider this. The Samsung Q2U in the UK, and it sells most of the rest in the world, um, in the United States, North America, and other places, it sells is the Audio Technica 2100 USB, ATR 2100 USB to give its full title. If you get any questions about this, please do leave a comment below. I've tried to cover everything, but I realise, you know, there's probably some things that I haven't considered that other people would want me to test. So I'll do my best to answer it in the comment area, or if necessary, I could always record another video. But if you enjoyed the video, please do consider liking or subscribing. And until next time, take care. Thanks.